Welcome back to the garden. Even with a brutal summer, which included two and a half months with no rain and 30 days above 100 degrees, the garden has continued to amaze me. I am not good at relaxing. With the heat this summer, the creatures of the garden showed me it is okay to relax and slow down. I will let you be the judge of how well I succeeded to relax. My wife decided I needed some chairs to sit in so I could fully enjoy the garden and relax. I decided the chairs needed to be on a patio. Well, I've been working on this patio and uh, I got it cleared, got a couple stones down there just to see how I thought it would look. Went back and got some more stones so that the back of the chairs were sitting on stone. And I'm going to add a coping. I got a couple stones just to try it out to see if I like how it looks to help with erosion and hopefully give it some definition. Building the patio was like a big jigsaw puzzle. The pieces are just a little bigger and heavier. While building the patio, I think I moved each stone 10 times. Not the best way to relax, but I have spent hours sitting in the garden and this has allowed me to learn more about the plants and the creatures who call it home. to re-level this, but uh, I think that's good for now. When I work in the garden for hours, I often wonder why gardening isn't an Olympic event. I think it'll look nice. I just got to go get some more stone. I continued to work the stone structure of the coping to ensure it was level and complemented the patio by framing it correctly. In this heat, it's very important to stay hydrated. There are so many things that come through the garden that I just don't get pictures of. And there's this really big green beetle. That's all I know about him, because he just goes zoom, zoom, and then he's gone. But I just saw him land, and I got a picture of him coming out of the ground after probably laying eggs. I learned this is a fig beetle. They are clumsy flyers, and they don't seem to be able to turn very well, as they are known to crash into objects, including people. Their favorite food is fruit, but it has to be super ripe, as they are unable to bite into immature fruit. So it's been a little bit of an unusual day. Spent the morning uh, removing silt fencing from a preserve. Thought I'd come home and Asked my wife to come out here and sit and watch the butterflies and hummingbirds which have recently showed up. And then she saw it in my eyes. She said, you can't resist, can you? I said, no. So she said, go ahead. And so uh, I ran after the landscaping truck, commandeered all the leaves and pine needles which are on their truck. And now I'll be spreading them the rest of the afternoon, but hopefully the gardens will look a lot better.
If you didn't notice, this is me relaxing. Well, uh, it took me an hour and 45 minutes to get that moved around, but uh, if you look at it, you can see, I think it looks pretty good. It's free, help hold the moisture in, and uh, I think it looks a lot better than it did. So uh, that's great. I want people to be able to visit the garden and relax while slowly strolling through the garden on the path. There are a couple of plants which have grown over the path and make this impossible. I was able to trim many of the plants back, but the one set of Texas rock rose required more effort. So some of the plants are falling over on the path and I need to somehow stake them up. I've tried multiple different ways that just aren't working, so I'm going to have to be a little bit more robust. I bought some stakes that are, I'm estimating, five feet tall and I drilled some holes in them, put some crossbars on them that hopefully will help stake these up and so people can actually walk across on the uh, path. In a number of cases, the plants were falling over and needed better support to stand up. My first attempts to help them were pretty pathetic. So I staked up the, the rock rose, so it's not on the path, but it's still too tall. I need to move it. And I'm looking at a couple different locations just to help give the garden that look of low to high. Uh, Obviously the goldenrod's very high, but I'm not moving that. I'm going to leave that there. It, it likes it and seems to be doing well. I still need to clean up the path a little, but it is now ready for visitors again. As the daily temperatures came down, I took the opportunity to transplant a number of plants to provide a better environment for them to grow. I moved the four nerve daisy to an area with more sun and drier conditions. I enhanced the area with stone and rock. The elderberries returned to Josh's yard to obtain more sun. I replaced them with lavender to help keep the mosquitoes away. One of the biggest challenges is determining if plants are going to succeed where you originally put them. These are blazing stars. They've kind of laid down. They need to be around things that support them. So I'm going to transplant them into the milkweed and goldenrod and then put something else in here. If you live in the United States, you've probably seen one of these. It's an exoskeleton of a cicada. And um, I've seen tons of them, but I'd never seen one come out of it. So recently I was uh, out in the garden and saw one that was starting to come out and I videoed it and I thought I'd share it with you. It's a little alien and creepy. <laughs> This short sequence of video is only a small portion of the hour I watched this cicada emerge. It was evening, the sun was setting, and there was a slight breeze making it challenging to capture the event. 
I tried to edit it down to a length I felt you would watch. Since the cost of plants is so high, I'm gonna to try to do some propagation. I've never done it before, don't really know what I'm doing. I've got eight pots here. I'm gonna put a little bit of pine straw on the bottom just so that the uh, dirt doesn't go through the holes. Add some potting soil, cut. Put the stems of the cutting into some root compound to help with the root development. Uh, and then water pretty uh, regularly to make sure that they don't dry out and we'll see if we can't get them to root. I still have a lot to learn about propagating plants, but I did learn it's best to minimize the plant size above the ground using only a couple of leaves. Keep the soil very moist, and in three weeks, you can transfer the plants into your garden. I will provide an update on these plants in a future video. Well, I'm out relaxing in the garden. I hope you had a good summer. In the next video, I rewild the next section of my yard and talk about the dreams for rewilding. I hope you'll join me.